The year is 2013 and Steam just launched its early access program. Now you can get your hands on games like Kerbal Space Program or Arma 3 before it's even finished. Sounds kind of cool, right? I mean, I used to love beta testing games, so this could be kind of awesome. Well, fast forward to 2024 and it seems like half the new games are launching as early access titles. Some in pretty decent states, while others much less so. This got me thinking maybe something needs to change. Being someone who likes to play the newest games, I often find myself playing these early access titles, with the most recent being Nightingale. I had fully intended on making a video specifically about Nightingale, but I had so many points of frustration that I found myself wanting a solution to the seemingly random quality of these early access games. On one hand, we have games like Valheim or Gunfire Reborn that mostly felt like a finished product on the other hand, we have games like SCP-5K that are just so rough and unfinished, it's basically unplayable past an hour or so, at least from the last time I played it. To figure out why we can get such wildly different products, I decided to do a little digging to see what exactly does Steam require in order to use their early access program. Well, as it turns out, not much actually. Looking at Steam's own website, they have a list of questions for the developer to ask themselves before using this program, as well as some vague requirements. One of those requirements is to give details on how long you intend the game to be in early access, but if you don't know, then explain why. Okay, sounds fair enough, I guess, right? Looking at a game like Power World, you see that they plan on being in early access for about a year or so, unless things change based off what the community wants. Okay, cool. That seems like a reasonable time frame I can get behind. Nightingale is pretty much the same story. They say about nine to 12 months, but they'll release the game when they feel that it's fully finished. From what I've experienced playing the game, a year seems reasonable. And then we look at a game like Seven Days to Die. Unlike the other games, this one doesn't have an estimated release date or an explanation as to why they don't. So Steam isn't even enforcing their own requirements. Seven Days to Die officially launched in early access in December of 2013. It's over 10 years ago and they claim the game is still in alpha. At what point do we say, okay, that's a little too long. Don't take this the wrong way. I've played the game and I've enjoyed my time with it, but 10 years of alpha? Come on. When you by an early access game, you are doing so with the promise of an eventual finished product. One, maybe two years down the road feels like a reasonable time frame for something like that. As a consumer, you should have some sort of guarantee that you are going to have a full product at some point within reason. From what I understand, Steam's requirements leave it open to stay in permanent early access as long as they continue to develop the game, meaning that us as gamers and consumers just have no idea if or when they will have a final product. Basically, Steam says, hey, do you pinky promise you're going to finish the game? And the developers are like, yeah, we pinky promise. Epic Games is even worse. I'm just gonna read right from their webpage. Some studios leverage early access to collect and incorporate user feedback, evolving their product by focusing on the features and functionality that most interest their users. While it is up to you to define what early access means for your product, releasing for early access can offer an iterative approach to building, testing, improving, and ultimately launching a complete high quality game to users. By leaving it up to the developer to define what early access is, you are opening up the floodgates for very rough and extreme extremely unfinished games to be pumped out to consumers, just so that these platforms can get their cut. I would really like to avoid a future where every game is a paid alpha test. Imagine if you went to a car dealership and they told you that the car you're buying isn't really finished yet, but you'll get a small discount on it. The first question might be, okay, well, how much work still needs to be done on it? Well, we're not really sure exactly, but it'll probably be like a year or two before we finish it after you buy it. So how do I know you guys will keep your word and actually finish it? Don't worry, you can trust us, I promise. Next thing you know, you're driving around in a car with no AC, stereo only works sometimes, the passenger seat is missing, the windows are stuck down, paint job is non-existent, you have no idea if or when these problems are going to be fixed. I know this isn't an apples to apples comparison, but it does get the point across. I know I mentioned Valheim already, but I do want to quickly talk about it. This game has come a long way, especially with its multiplayer. I remember when the game first launched and trying to get all my friends onto one ship was pretty much impossible. People would constantly glitch the ship and fall into the water, often leading to their death. And now when I play with friends, I don't really have that problem at all. Everything just works fine. In general, polishing, bug fixing, and new enemies, areas, building materials, crafting recipes have all been added. Really an expansion of every aspect of the game. On top of that, the devs keep everyone informed and updated when things are supposed to come out. It's not like we're sitting in the dark for too long, especially when it comes to major updates. When the game first launched, I finished beating all the content at the time, especially for that price. It did feel mostly like a full game and I easily got my money's worth. It hasn't been all perfect though. 
The game came out about three years ago and it's been a slow roll of content. The game launched with, I believe, five or six biomes and now we're sitting at seven, including the ocean, with the Ashlands set to come out very soon. They fleshed out a lot of things, but it's like watching grass grow, waiting for content to release. The game sold around 10 million copies just about after its first year. With the amount of money they made from those sales, I wish they would have hired some people or did something to speed up the process so they can release some content a little bit faster. As far as early access goes, Valheim, in my opinion, is one of the better examples, even with its slow content release. Now, Nightingale. Nightingale is a tricky one and I have some mixed feelings about it. Yes, it caused a lot of frustration, but most of the issues I had with it are meant to be solved in the alpha stage anyways. The mechanics of the game are there, the stuff you need to play is there. It's just some of it was really clunky and not fun to interact with, but I think it had the stuff it needed based on people's generally accepted definition of what the alpha stage of the game is. The devs do post regularly about updates and what to expect for content releases, but being a new game, that level of activity is expected. The only way to know for sure if we will get what was promised is by waiting it out. This is why early access is sort of a tricky thing. On one hand, I understand the purpose it's supposed to serve, and I think it's a good thing, but the lack of any sort of guarantee that you are going to get a final product or even something resembling what was promised at your time of purchase is concerning. This brings us to our next game, Wilson, a game that was vastly different at the beginning of its early access versus its full release. When I purchased the game at the beginning of early access, it was an action RPG, top-down open world game with a camera you could rotate. By the end of early access and going into its full release, they had completely changed it from an open world to a linear experience with a fixed camera. One of the purposes of early access is to adjust based on community feedback. Maybe that's what they did here, or they just wanted to change those things to make it easier on themselves, I don't know. But it's something to keep in mind and something I felt that was worth mentioning. I feel like I got my money's worth, but one of my friends is understandably salty that the release version of the game isn't what we had initially purchased. So what do we do? What's the solution? Well, that really depends. If I'm the only one that feels like this, well, I'll just go mauled in a corner somewhere. If not, then it starts with just being vocal about it. If enough people start bitching about it, maybe companies like Valve and Epic Games will make changes to the policies with clearly defined and stricter requirements. The obvious solution would be to just stop buying early access games until things change, but let's be real here. Way too many people have zero impulse control and will continue to buy them anyway, so that's just not an option. It's this exact reason why microtransactions aren't even close to micro anymore, but that's a whole other topic. This next bit, you're gonna have to take with a hefty pinch of salt because I just don't know much about game development. I did do my due diligence when it came to research, but that only gets you so far, so if you have a better understanding of this and have a better solution or fix to mine, I would love to hear it. So I think the first change needs to be that a game only comes to early access well into the alpha or later stage. Unfortunately, this brings up another problem and that's no clear definition of what alpha stage really is. But it seems like most people would agree that alpha means that most of the game's features and content are in the game. Most meaning at least more than half or over 50%. I say well into alpha because half of a game just isn't good enough. A game I was really looking forward to for years called Witchfire dropped on Epic Game Store as early the access and only has two of the six levels, even after six months, at least at the time of recording this. That is unacceptable, especially considering it's $40. At a bare minimum, I would say four of the six levels needs to be done. So let's pick a percentage then, something maybe like 75-ish percent of the game's content and features should be in the game. That's a number I think some people can get behind and it would severely lessen the negative views on early access games. Let's assume people agree on a number. What next? Well, we need something playable, right? Just because that magical number is reached doesn't mean that it's not an unplayable mess of spaghetti code. We are, after all, purchasing a game and it should be just that, a game I can play. The simple solution is for Valve and Epic Games to just have a team of testers to play through the games following a strict set of requirements. Considering how Valve's revenue is well into the billions, like 10 billion in 2021 and 13 billion in 2022, I think they can afford to have some dude play through a game to make sure it's ready for early access. Yes, I know that's revenue and not profit, but that's still an ungodly amount of money. <laughs> If we actually define things, require more of the game to be completed and playable, and potentially have someone verify that the game is in fact ready, I think gamers would be significantly happier. I do want to point out that the intent of this video is to take the temperature of the room, so to speak. I wanna know if other people feel the same or similar, and if they do, maybe enough people will start to be vocal enough about it and potentially drive some change. To be clear, I'm not saying early access needs to go away. It would just be nice to know that even if you buy an early access game, it will at least have enough content to justify its price. So, should I go mauled in the corner now or are you all kind of tired of it too let me know down below that's all i got for you go kick some ass and get some dubs thank you all so much for watching and as always the goo crew thinks and appreciates you